Hi guys and welcome to this, I want to say a bit of an update video on my channel and some of the projects that I'm working on. So, I've been working on the channeling docu-series and I know a lot of people are waiting for this docu-series to come out. There is, I want to say, 90 plus interviews right now for that channeling docu-series. So I'm going to put that channeling docu-series out this month of September 2019. It'll probably be a little bit towards the end of the month right now. Um, we've got a number of the episodes already edited and uh, here's a, a quick sample of one of those shows. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? and can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers, we'll take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? My name is Joe McQuillan, uh, father of three, one on the other side. Uh, I would say, to my own surprise, I'm an author and, uh, and, 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 and a seeker of, of a world I didn't know exists prior to losing my son in a canoe accident January 3rd, 2016. So I think what I do now is, 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 is seek and search for, for where he is, what that's all about, and report back to other people like me who've lost kids and didn't don't know that they're still right here. Late today, search crews pulled a third body for out of Lake Beulah. Four men from the northern suburbs fell in while they were canoeing there over the weekend. All of them recent graduates of New Trier High School in Winnetka. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Gallardo joins us live. She's near the lake in East Troy. Michelle? Lynn and Allen, that search continues at this hour. The third body was pulled from the water around 2.30 in the afternoon, about 200 feet from shore, and almost a full day after the first two were found. But there's still one man, one fourth man out there that has yet to be recovered. And today, the North Shore community they're from is mourning their loss. One more body was pulled from the icy waters of Lake Beulah near East Troy, Wisconsin this afternoon as dive teams continued the search that began early yesterday when four young men, all from Chicago's North Shore, went missing following a canoe trip gone wrong. So far, three of the four men have been found and today, Winnetka's New Trier High School confirms all of them either graduated or at one point attended the school. Investigators have so far confirmed the identity of two of the dead. They are Chris McQuillan, 21, from Winnetka, and Lenny Patrick Sack, 20, also of Winnetka. Friends say the four were part of a larger group, spending time at a lake house nearby. They left the house around 2.30 a.m. Sunday and never returned. But it wasn't until 9 o'clock when others noticed their beds empty that the search began. In, in, in Christmas 2015, all, all the 
college kids were home as they are across the country and uh, and celebrating and kicking up their heels and, and the last hurrah before they were all going back to college. Um, a, a dozen friends all rendezvoused at a uh, Wisconsin lake house in Lake Beulah, Wisconsin. So that's the channeling docu-series. It's looking fantastic. There's 90 of them um, that I'm going to be releasing. Well, there's more actually. There's more because um, I'm going to be continuing to film for new channelers and um, so I'm hoping to get it up to just over a hundred for the channeling docu-series which um, you know I think it's possible um, I never quite knew how the thing was going to turn out the channeling docu-series was going to turn out but you know I'm just like I said you know really happy uh, that um, it looks so great it's, it's great content um, the docu-series will be released three every week on my YouTube channel over nine months, but they'll probably extend that to 10 months once, you know, more content, maybe 12, once more content comes um, comes my way, uh, once, the, once the 90 of um, broadcast. But um, yeah, very proud of that and um, just super pleased that I've uh, delivered on, you know, my crowdfunder that I put up a few years ago to get that documentary made. And it's, it's, uh, it's now going out, so, it taught me a couple of things, just how long it takes to get some of these projects, um, you know, fulfilled and, you know, you know, to get them edited and, you know, distributed and this stuff. It's a long process. And uh, in the future, if that uh, docu-series becomes a documentary, which it might do, uh, you'll probably see that on Gaia TV. But that's that's not yet. First job is to get it out on this channel and, you know, give it back to the crowdfunders who participated in making this amazing, you know, journey happen. So go into my next thing now which is a very quick update on Mark Richards so Kerry Cassidy put a strike on my ca channel she put a uh, copyright strike it's called get the words out and I fought the copyright they got back to me YouTube did and they sided with myself to say that uh, you know she'd unfairly put the copyright there and it can be removed and uh, the video can be released again so if you want to see my latest update on the whole fiasco of uh, Captain Mark Richards then it's just in the description below okay um, that documentary docu-series is being edited as well right now by myself but as soon as I've got the channeling docu-series done then obviously I'm going to go full pelt on the Captain Mark Richards stuff and um, I'm going to play some clips just at the end of this video one of the clips you're going to see is Mark um, back in the 70s playing a spaceman being chased um, being ch uh, being chased by uh, by someone it was a you know chase movies were kind of the thing back in the day uh, for some you know filmmakers and uh, it's just ironic that uh, you know he is who he says he is right now which he's not um, but um, yeah I'm looking forward to you know getting a really decent rough edit of the Mark Richards put together and it is happening um, that is that is about to um, about to be my full-time job. I mean, I've done it part-time a little bit right now, but once I get the channeling docu-series out, it is my full-time occupation getting that edited. And um, I think it's an important documentary for the community still. I still do. I, um, I think, you know, it's opening up my eyes to other documentaries that I want to do in the not-too-distant future. Um, but I've got uh, a lot on my plate right now. I've got a lot of things to come back to you guys just to talk about uh, soon as well, but I'll do that in just another quick video. So here's some of that uh, footage from Mark Richards, the uh, docu-series documentary, whichever one it's going to be right now. And um, I just want to say thank you guys as well for, um, you know, for uh, continuing to watch my content that I put out on my channel and for all the new subscribers as well. Thank you very much. So enjoy this. July 7th, 1982. A man by the name of Dick Baldwin is murdered with a bat, knife, and screwdriver. The criminal's intent? A hostile military takeover of Marin. This murder was the climax of the Pendragon Conspiracy.
My name's Ed Berberian, and I, back in the day when the murder of Richard Baldwin occurred, I was a deputy district attorney here in the county. I'm now the district attorney for Marin. But at the time, um, I was uh, the attorney that was eventually assigned to, uh, to be the trial attorney and prosecutor on the case involving uh, Richard Baldwin's uh, murder. Mark Richards, who is one of the three individuals that were involved in the killing, he had gone to the house of a Mr. Healy, who was the gentleman that had uh, been selling this motor. And uh, it was through that contact uh, that Mark Richards' name became known to the police. Uh, it was also determined there were young people with him, some young adults or young teenagers with him at the time. and. Um, they then, through their investigation, determined where Mr. Richards lived, and that was in San Anselmo area, and near the hub in San Anselmo. And they uh, uh, went to the location that uh, they found for Mr. Richards, and at the time, uh, he was in the process of taking some material from his house to the dump, or to get disposed of. Turns out to be some critical information was located at that time, such things as duct tape and some other items that were in the truck that could be then forensically linked back to the wrappings that were on the body uh, of uh, Mr. Baldwin. So uh, Mark Richards was taken into custody. Uh, as were the juveniles that were with him. One of the juveniles uh, who was eventually tried is Cross and Hoover. Uh, he was certified to the adult court during the process and was tried as a co-defendant to Mark Richards. Well, yeah, the trial of, of, of uh, Richards actually went first, and uh, he, was, he was convicted, uh, as, as you know. He eventually receives a sentence of life without the possibility of parole because in this murder, one of the... Uh, there's something called special circumstances that if you kill someone and it's a first degree murder in California and it's a murder with special circumstances, there's only two punishments. One is death, the other is life without the possibility of parole. We did not seek the death penalty in the case. We uh, had made a decision based on Richard's prior record that uh, this was not a death penalty case. We went after life without the possibility of parole, and that's what the jury did return and the judge did sentence him on. Uh, again, Mr. Richards was a very interesting personality, let's put it that way. I considered him to be a very dangerous individual.